Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 30th episode of the Two Left Feet Podcast. Um, today, we had on the wonderful Mr. Igor Fraga, who is a uh, traveling zook instructor as well as DJ. He's a zooker. He is a DJ. He is a ramen enthusiast as well. Uh, this guy was born and raised in Brazil, moved to uh, the U.S., I believe around 15 years old. Uh, in this episode, we talk about you know what it's like growing up in Brazil, what it was like transitioning with his mother to the United States. Um, we talk about, you know, uh, what it was like learning to DJ. We talk about his, uh, how he initially got into Zook, as well as, you know, the beginning stages for him, you know, um, him being a teacher, you know, it's always, it's always interesting to hear, you know, uh, the, the come up, you know, how, how they got to where they are. So, you know, we talk about that as well. Um, this guy is really cool. I like his style. Um, very interesting episode, just, just cause we get a chance to, you know, hear his backstory, you know, hear, hear how his upbringing affected his life and, you know, made him into the person that he is today, you know, um, which is, you know, a full-time DJ, you know, and zoo constructor, you know, how, how amazing is it that he can, um, you know, he, he can do this full-time, you know, this is how he earns his paycheck, you know, and it doesn't come without his hardships, but, you know, he's, he, he's loving what he's doing, which is so amazing, um, if you find value in this, I want to ask that you please leave a like and subscribe, you know, share with your people. Um, and if there is no value to you, then don't worry about it. Um, but, you know, my overall goal is to give value. So please let me know where I can improve, you know, what I'm doing wrong and what I can do better. I would greatly appreciate that. So, um, you know, let's just get straight into it. Episode 30 of the Two Left Feet Podcast with a Mr. DJ Igor Fraga. DJ Fraga, a.k.a. Zook. Nomad, Nomad Zook. Hey, let's get into it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, so I am now on the line with a Mr. Igor Fraga, a.k.a. Yep. Zooker, who is a <laughs> Zooker, a DJ, and also a ramen enthusiast. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. How you doing today, man? Doing all right, man. Really good. That's awesome, man. I'm curious, man. Um, I know you stay in New York. Where were you born, though? Or New Jersey? Uh, where were you born? Well, I was born in Brazil, Belo Horizonte, to be more exact. You know, it's one of the um, like major cities in in Brazil, but it's not uh, very well known because it's not like on the coast. Okay. We don't have uh, yeah, we don't have the ocean for us. But <laughs> it's still, it's still a lot of fun out there. You know, uh-huh. I'm curious, what was it like growing up there, man? Uh, well, I I have to say at least um, like. Compared to, like, um, all of my friends, I think I had a pretty awesome childhood because, awesome. like, amazing. the yeah, the place that I uh, that I grew up, it's um, like it was super um, chill, but still, like, it got a lot of life. You know, like I used to grow up with um, a bunch of people just walking around on the streets um, and like a bunch of kids playing. Uh, like outside on the streets all day long and all of that stuff, you know, and uh, like at least for like with the friends that I grew up with, um, like aside from the ones from my neighbor- neighborhood that I used to play, of course, but you know the others uh, from school and all of the other places, like they didn't. I don't know why they didn't used to do that, but I mean, for me, I had a pretty awesome childhood. I can't That's go. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've never been to Brazil, man. Um, what is it a big? What did you grow up dancing? Like, uh, was your family a, a household of dancers or? Uh, yes and no. I mean, in Brazil, um, like we have this uh, culture of like music and like we love dance. Not that like everyone dances, but um. Like one thing that, um, like in my state, for example, Minas Gerais, 
it's very common is for people to dance for hall. Like I heard, I heard that I heard that's the most popular, right? For hall? It it is. It is the most popular dance in Brazil because it's a it's a folk dance, you know, it's very uh, cultural, um, especially in Minas and a few other states. And uh it's a very easy dance to get started with. So okay. that's the kind of stuff that we grow up with um like in our family parties, you know. That's how I started learning. Okay. Okay. I guess you, man. So I'm, I'm curious though. Um, so you know, I guess you taught for Hoa at a at a young age. Is that is that kind of what sparked uh, your dancing journey, or what? Not not really. I mean, back in the day when I was a teenager, I started learning for Hoa with uh, my cousins and uh, the rest of my family, but it was. Uh, just a hobby, you know. Like I, okay, okay. I wasn't like I wasn't big into like uh, too curious about like actually learning uh, a lot of dances and all of that. I spent years just dancing those like few basic uh, okay, steps, okay, of, uh, for her, just for fun, you know. Yeah. But um, like that whole um, thing changed, then I actually started getting into the into dance uh, for real. After I saw people dance Suzuki for the first time. Ah, okay, okay. I, I'm curious, man. Um, I want to say you're maybe the third or fourth Brazilian I've had on the show. You have some good English, man. What did you uh, where did you learn English? Uh, I learned English um a little bit in Brazil, but it's that like uh school English that we okay okay that we learn, you know. So like from that English that I learned back there, I learned uh like colors and hi my name is igor and <laughs> book is on the table and and all of that kind of stuff you know but um like actually learning um like and increasing my vocabulary and working on conversation and all of that was after i moved to the states um well actually the first um like on the first time that i came to the states that i um i started taking english lessons um you know like esl kind of stuff okay yeah, yeah, yeah. and um like that work uh that helped me out a lot in like mm -hmm. conversation and understanding people like when they're like talking and um what um what i did to work a lot uh, to work on my pronunciation and that uh, just get it easier for me to yeah. speak and all of that was through music ah. like I used to uh, play guitar a okay. long time ago, and like to play guitar, I had to, you know, like sing. Even though I like, I don't really like uh, to sing so much, but uh -huh. I had to. So it it helped. It helped. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so I'm curious, man. Um, what uh what brought you to the states? Well, my mom lives in the states for over 15 years now it's been a long long time you know okay and um like when um when she had her papers like i was under 18 years old uh-huh so i had the right to have my um my residency here as well okay so she applied uh for it they granted me the uh residency and then i had to move here you know okay and I say I had to move because um, I wasn't really planning on it. It was just something that my mom did. And then I was like, oh, okay. So I have to, like, for me not to lose the um, status that they gave me, uh -huh. I need to actually be a resident. So yeah. I came here and just started figuring out what to do, you know. I'm okay, curious. So, um, your residency, are you like, are you now a, a U.S. citizen? Like, do you have a, a temporary pass here? What, what is it? Uh, no, I'm like, I'm still just a resident here. Um, like I could be a citizen already. I should have applied for oh, okay, uh, okay. my naturalization. I just been postponing that for so, some time now. now I guess so, so yeah, what, what are the, what are the, uh, stipulations of a residency? Does that mean you can stay here forever or like what? what? I can. The okay. thing is, um, like, so it's basically the um, 
like in a way it's the opposite of a tourist visa for brazilians oh, okay because um like brazilians like we get tourist visa to come over here and we can stay um like a maximum amount of like six months like that's oh. the um the limit that people have to stay in the u.s my deal is the other way around i can't stay out of um of the u.s for longer oh. than six months oh wow okay that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah and so, and so i'm curious so you moved here you know when before you were 18 years old what did you move to you, you and your mother uh, well the first time that i came to uh to the u.s uh, my mother was living here in New Jersey. Okay. But that wasn't like I came here just for like five months. I was still um, studying. I was um, like in university back in Brazil. So I came here because I had to, you know, uh, finalize the papers and get the, uh, the card and everything. Okay. Okay. But then I had to move back to Brazil to continue with my studies you know and okay, then yeah. i uh, i also had to get a like an extension of on the time that i was allowed to stay outside so i could continue the studies and then once i finished i would mo move back here okay i got you now i understand that man and so so you move yeah so you're going back and forth between brazil and everything um yeah at, at what point did you did you start seeing brazilian zook so the first time that I saw Brazilian Zook, it was in January 2010. Okay. I was on the um, uh, I was on a beach with um, some of my friends in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, not the city, the state. It was actually uh, Cabo Frio, the the city that we were at, and uh, like one of the um one of the friends that i had with me on this uh vacation trip out there he was a like um a big forha dancer as well like he okay. was obsessed with forha and okay. he had like there was this party every day on the beach like literally on the on the sand of the beach with a live forha band you know oh. so like we were there for um like for a week so we started going to at this party to dance for hall and on all of that so one of the days that we were there the band like took a five minute break and then the guy at the bar where they host this um this party uh -huh. he just started playing some music out there and like once the music started playing i was like oh this this isn't for hall and i saw a bunch of people leaving the dance floor like i left oh. the dance floor myself. but like half of the people stayed and then the half of the people stayed just started moving and dancing and then i was like wait guys this isn't for hall what are you guys doing you know like i was uh confused at first so i just started like watching what they were doing uh -huh. and um like i had no idea what it was i just know that i was mesmerized by uh, yeah. the movements and all of the they're doing and i i think it was like about two months after I went back home, that the friend uh, that I had with me came up to me and told me, oh, I finally figured out the name of that uh, thing that people were dancing and something called Zook. Oh, and, oh. and that was it, you know. Okay. I guess you, so, yeah, so Resilient Zook, I'm curious, um, do you know, how, how old were you in 2010? I was um like at the time i was 20 years old okay so yeah you still very still young man um do you know much about the history of brazilian zoo because uh, I, I know it comes from a uh, lombada is that correct do you know yes yes the dance comes from um lombada what we had back in the 80s and still beginning like early 90s you know but the music side of it that's something completely uh different you know, it's uh, it's a very complicated story, actually, um, like the whole um, evolution and like history of the um, uh, the music that we dance to nowadays. All right, could you uh, could you tell me about expand on if you don't mind? Well, so basically, um, with the music, we don't um, like 
the music does not come from Lombada. Like Lombada was its own dance with its right. own music. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, like as um, like I believe you you already know this. Like there is no such thing as uh, Brazilian zouk music. Mm. We have the Brazilian zouk dance, which is right. came from Lombada. But then when it comes to the to the music that we dance to, it's um, like a big a variety of different uh, music styles that there are out there. Like we dance to pop, kizomba and um, r&b okay. some hip-hop and like all of a lot of different things right that um like throughout the years of the like evolution of the dance we started adding and finding new styles that like mm -hmm. oh this like we can work with uh the dance in this style of music here and there and we started bringing elements into uh the dance to um to adapt to some of the music that we were dancing as well okay i get you i understand that and, and so so you know, you're 20 years old um you see uh brazilian zoo for the first time and then so you move back to the states right yeah so at the end of that year that was when i moved um when i moved to the states for good like it was um begin like it was end of november 2010 very okay. end of november okay yeah. and say so, so you move back and um you know your friend tells you what it is do you do you start taking classes do you just forget about it what happens uh oh well, i no i um like once the, he told me what the name was i started looking uh things up on youtube and like just started watching whatever video i could find of people dancing Zouk. And uh, I didn't get the chance to start taking classes just yet. I, it took me like two years. Oh, wow. To actually start dancing classes so much that um, like I, like for that whole year, 2010, I was still in Brazil, but I just didn't get the chance to start learning. Okay. And then I moved to, uh, to the US. Once I moved to the US, I thought to myself, Ah, damn. Now, like, I'm all the way here in uh, in New York, and I'm never going to learn this dance now because I don't even know when I'm going to go back to Brazil. Right, right. So, like, the whole, um, like, year of 2011 living here, I kept watching videos. I okay. kept, like, uh, looking stuff up on YouTube, but never thought, um, like, the thought of, like looking for classes never occurred to me because I thought this was something that like there were, we only had it in Brazil. Right, 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 right. So when I go back to Brazil at the end of that year, um, actually beginning of 2012, I go back for a vacation. And while I'm, uh, um, I'm at a friend's house and we're just like catching up and talking about a bunch of stuff. And then one of them mentions oh you were, what about that like zook thingy that you uh that you were like you would talk so much about and all of that and i said well living in the u.s now i mean how the hell am i gonna learn that you know yes yeah. um i wouldn't expect it to have uh something like that in the states uh -huh. but then as i said that i the thought occurred to me well new york is the kind of place that has pretty much everything you can think of right like you think of something you're you might find it in yeah. a, a dark alley or some weird corner <laughs> in new york you know so <laughs> just out of curiosity i like i was like dude uh let me get your computer real quick so then i google zook new york you know just for um like easiness of mind exactly and then as i typed that what shows up? The website, Zook, New York. Oh, wow. Okay. I was like, no way. I can't believe this, you know? So I, uh, at that moment, I, just, I started reading the entire website, like every okay. single section that they had, every single information about classes and events and all of the stuff that they had. And then I was like, okay, this is it. As soon as I get back to the States now, I'm signing up for uh, hey, classes hey. and like I'm diving into it 
right away, you know. Uh-huh. So, That's yeah, awesome, that was man. that was my start. It was like first semester of 2012. I don't exact, exactly remember when. Okay, I understand, man. So I'm curious, man. Um and so, you know, you do research, you find out about it. Who uh who was your first Brazilian zoo constructor? My first Brazilian zoo constructor was uh, Riel Velandia. He's um, one of the teachers that uh, we have here in uh, in New York. He has his own school now called uh, Zenzuk. And um, like the first time that I went to a class, it was um, his class. I just you know sat in the corner. I was like, oh, just like I just want to watch, see uh-huh. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how things are going. And then the week after, I started taking classes already and I would take classes with uh, with him and with uh, Kim Rotier which is um, like with like she is the director of the school that um, that would like teach those classes that would give those classes called Zook New York you know? okay okay um, to my understanding you said um, Zen is it Zen Zook is that what you called it right Yes. Isn't that isn't that uh I, I guess somewhat different than Brazilian zoo? Isn't it kind of a, a little bit different or is it No, no. What okay, okay. uh Zen, Zen Zook is um a brand. It's the oh, name okay, of okay. Henry's school. It's not okay. a different style or anything. You no. Know? You go to uh the Zen Zook school, you're gonna learn um the traditional uh Brazilian zoo. And you, or you can learn Lumba, Lumba Zook as well, the Lumbana. Oh, okay. Okay. Version. Okay. I guess you. So, 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 um, yeah, you, know, you start taking classes in 2012. How big was the scene in New York? Was it, a, was it a small community or was it actually very popular? Very, uh, very small, very oh, small okay, compared okay. to the numbers that we have today. Right, it was, right, right. uh, it was a very, very small scene. Um, it was one of the, um, like most, um like proper prosper scenes back in the day back then like around uh north america but it was still in the like in the very beginning it was still small it, it was small everywhere okay right? no okay but uh, yeah it's grown uh quite yeah, a, quite yeah. a, a lot since then tell me um, um i forgot tell me your uh, instructor's name again what was it so uh, my instructors back at, uh, back then were um, Riel Velandia and Kim Rodier. So uh, Riel Velandia, the guy, um, what was his you know his story? Like he learned in in, in Brazil and, and just moved to the U.S. to teach, or what? No, he learned from Kim Rodier. She is the oh, one okay. who brought uh, Zook to North America on oh. the um, like west. Uh, sorry, the East Coast okay. of uh, North America. Well, I, I, let's talk about her then, Kim Rodier. Tell me, do you know anything about her? Yes, she's the one who trained me, actually. Okay, that's uh, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So she started, uh, I believe it was 2007 that she moved to um, to the U.S. She came to New York and uh, from Australia, which is where she learned and trained oh. in Brazilian Zook. And, um, once I, um, like once I started taking classes, she was, uh, she was teaching her classes. She had trained, uh, Riel Valandia to teach his own, uh, his classes with the group as well. And there was another, uh, teacher called, uh, Shannon that would teach, um, another day, like okay. with, uh, all in the same school. And... Um, like she, she helped me a lot in the very beginning. Like what I uh, do nowadays, I owe m- like most of it to, to her yeah. because, um, like she, uh, she taught me a lot of stuff. She helped me out and, um, she was the one who gave me the incentive to take the, her teacher's course and start training oh. as an instructor as well. So, um, I did that and I started training um under her like as an instructor and um and then the rest is history you know <laughs> uh, i, I want to talk about the beginning though man for you um when you first start learning what was that like for you learning brazilian zook 
it was um it was amazing it was an amazing experience uh for me like i um uh, i remember to this day uh some of the classes that i would take i um like i used to like when i was when i started taking classes i used to work at a restaurant up where i lived and mind you i lived like two i lived back in back then it was like two hours uh drive from new york okay so i used to work thursday friday and saturday but uh the classes that they had were on monday friday and saturday uh -huh. monday i would go um like was it um yeah i would go every week for the first semester on mondays and then on saturdays i like once i came back from brazil i went up to my boss at the restaurant and i told him listen uh, i know that saturday is the day that we are like um busier here at the restaurant and it's the day that i would make the most um like money out there right, right, right. yeah but i can't do saturday anymore okay like, I need that saturday so i can go down to new york and take classes you know? yeah so i was um i was working just uh thursday and friday and then going down every monday and a saturday like driving two hours down to newark new jersey so i could then take the train into new york so i can take two hours of classes and then oh, go wow home. okay that's, yeah. that's dedication man yeah but it was uh, oh my god it was so much fun like the like the good thing about the two hour drive was that like throughout the drive i would uh like i was down like getting a bunch of like a bunch of songs so i could practice and yeah get used to the music and all of that so the entire way um like on that trip it was just like blasting brazilian <laughs> music in my car and it was it was a great time you know that's I awesome it. i'm curious man um what do you think what do you think makes you enjoy brazilian zuka so much like you know what 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 about it that you enjoy so much um well it's um a combination of the dance and the music right okay. because in the dance it um like what i felt when i first saw people dancing somehow i had this impression that uh that dance was made for me like it was <laughs> All right, nice. um like it, i i just had that feeling that it was something that i was like i had i had been looking my my whole life but i didn't even know it like and then once i saw that i was like oh my god this is it like the movements and like the feeling of it and once i started learning actually learning the dance i started understanding um like the connection behind all of those movements and all of that dance, which is just amazing. And uh, in re regards to the music, I mean, it's um, I just find it awesome that the music that we dance to has such a like a few good uh, vibe into it, you know, and mm. like, and we dance to a lot of like different styles of music that each style brings a different uh, vibe, brings a different um identity and personality into um into our dance you know and into our enjoyment of the whole thing as well i definitely understand that man that's really cool so so you, you um i just want to go through the beginning so you, you you're learning zook and everything you're traveling you know monday and saturday taking classes and everything um how long did you do that for how long were you practicing um i was doing that um for at least a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, because uh, that first uh, that first year, 2012, I was um, like I was going and uh, taking classes like that entire year, and like I would go down to um, a couple of event events, like some of the socials. Back then, we used to have social every other Tuesday, oh. so I would go to those as well whenever possible. And then 
2013, I was still doing that throughout the year. Um, with, But in addition to that, I was also going to all of the events, like congresses and festivals okay. that um, that we would have Zook in it, you know. And 2013 was the year that we started having actual, like, uh, only Zook festivals, you know. Uh -huh. but before, you would have our, like, um, our little room in Salsa or Bachata Congresses, right? And then in 2013, we started having, like, um, like all our actual zoo congress, like only zoo uh, festivals and whatnot, you know. Okay. So that year, um, I went to literally every single event in North America that had zoo in it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, 2013 was was amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, what do you think changed for for Brazilian zoo in 2013? You know, what they got some traction it just became popular you, you, what do you think changed for it well um what changed in it like it grew a lot since then and a big part of the um like the reason why it grew was like all of the festivals that we started having you know because then like we started meeting people like everyone started uh, meeting people from all over North America because there was a bunch of communities spread around um, okay. like the East Coast and right, West Coast. Right. And only some of the teachers uh, from each one of those places would know people from other scenes. Mm. The students themselves, like they uh, wouldn't travel so much and like and all over the place uh, and get to meet new people, you know. So once we started having those, uh, all of those festivals, um, like we started meeting people from um, like a bunch of other cities, you know, like the ones that are like more uh, a lot far uh, further than the uh -huh. close by cities, because then uh -huh. that's easy for us to go up and down. Right, right, right. But it was just that, you know, um, that congregation getting all of those people from so many different places together and getting to dance with so many new people. And it was just so awesome meeting yeah. uh, everyone that, you know, it gave a lot of life into the the scene all over uh, North America, you know? Okay. No, I definitely understand that. So, so yeah, you know, um, you start traveling a lot, doing going to Congress in 2013. Um, at what point did you decide, uh, you know, to start teacher training? When did that come about? That was in 2013, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, I started training in, um, I did the teacher training in uh, January 2013. And then, like, that whole year I spent, um, like, just, like, still, like, con continued uh, taking classes and I was training with Kim and working on a lot of stuff and um and then little by little I started like teaching classes here in New York and then I would go uh to other cities to teach a couple of workshops and things like that and then I started developing things from there what made you want to start teaching well part of it was because um I uh, I just thought to myself, like learning how to teach would not um, like would also give me a lot of learning yeah. in that process, you know. Right, and right. My uh, one of my goals once I uh, saw Zook for the first time was I wanted to learn this dance, and I uh, I would like to be as good as I can be in it. Of course, of course. So I wanted to learn a lot and I wanted to learn like fast. I was going really hardcore into training and all of that in the beginning. So uh, part of that, um, part of the reason why I went into training for, uh, to be a teacher was to like get a bigger understanding and like practice a lot more um, on, on this dance. And another side of it was um, I also thought it would help me um like be a little more outspoken okay because, yeah like 
I um, I usually don't like to talk a lot. Um, like in conversations, I'm like more of the listening type. I like to listen hey. to people talking okay. and whatnot. And uh, like whenever I like I have something to say, like usually it's very you know direct and like simple. Mm. Okay. Know? But then I thought, well, being out there, you know, like um, and like having to teach people and explain things would help me out um with like getting a little to get a little bit more um to be a little more outspoken and, yeah. and all of that you know Definitely. and uh the other reason um and one of my biggest goals when i um like when i started training as a teacher was to like one day be able to inspire people just as my teachers inspired me Mm -hmm. um in learning zook you know so that was like one of my main goals to Not become definitely. a teacher yeah i understand that i, I want to go back a little bit um what was it like moving to america you know when you first came from brazil what was that like well the first time that i came here it was uh it was very difficult because i um like i barely knew any english uh, okay okay and i didn't know everyone like i only exactly. knew my um like my mom here so uh, real quick, uh, were you um were you still in school like a university or were you done with that completely? uh no i was so the first time that i came here i was uh in university back in brazil so i had to um like take a break like for a semester so i could come here and take care of Right, right, right. Um, all of the paperwork, so I could go back to continue, right? So uh, when you yeah, got was, here, though, and yeah, when you got here, yeah. though, you weren't in school. Anything? Were you just working, or no? When I got here, the first time, um, I um, I was here just to study English. That's okay. all oh, okay. I was doing at the time, you know. So then I I stayed here for like five months, and then I went back to Brazil so I could continue university there, and then. Um, like I did another like year and a half out there and then moved to the States for good. Okay. So, yeah, so when you moved here for good, what was that like for you then? Just, you just well, working all day or what? Um, not just working, but I also, um, like I started, uh, like taking classes again. Like I was taking some classes, like ESL classes um again and then my teacher on as soon as i started like two months into my classes she was like igor you should apply for college i'm gonna help you out you should oh. be uh you should go into college and i wasn't really sure about doing that um right away because uh -huh. i had just gotten here and i didn't know if my english at the time was good enough Mm -hmm. to take um to take lessons like to take classes and like college level exactly so, yeah yeah so um but she she helped me out with the process and everything she told me no like don't worry about it you um you'll be fine it's actually and it's actually gonna help you a lot more into improving your own english you know yeah and, yeah so that's what i did and would you uh, watch it would you go um, would you go so it was just a community college uh back where i lived because um like at the time we were upstate new york that's like the two hour uh drive yeah, 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 yeah. so it was a very very small uh city out there and there was a community college like uh seven miles from my house so um she told me no like apply to this one here and it's gonna be great and all of that so yeah i I went in, you know, and started figuring out what um, what, what to do out there. Okay, I'm curious. What was it like for your mother? You know, um, coming to live in America. Difficult. Uh, Why do you really say that? Difficult because, um, like, she didn't know a lot of people here in the beginning, and when she came here, she um, like. It was all about just like working, you know, working, hey, 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 trying to provide all day long. And yeah, yeah, because um, you know she was living here, but she still had to take care of me 
right. uh, back in Brazil and all of that. So, um, like moving to a new country is a very difficult in, experience in the beginning, you know, like especially yeah. when you don't know a lot of people. No, I definitely understand that, man. I, what, um, yeah, I, you might not know completely, but you know, what, um, what do you think kept her going? Like, how, how was she able to overcome that? Well, she had, um, she had some friends here from um, like some friends from like uh, from Brazil that were living here for quite some time already and child ch childhood friends. So they helped my mom a lot in the beginning. Awesome. OK, like, a lot, a lot. And the other thing was my mom would call uh, would call us back home in Brazil almost every day <laughs> and spend hours on on the phone and like she and like back in uh, that time as well she uh, she managed to get me a good computer okay. um, for my home with uh, with a nice webcam so we could uh, video chat okay, as that's well. awesome that's awesome yeah I understand man your mother sounds uh, incredibly strong man how, how is she doing today yeah uh she's she's doing great yeah she's um like we, we moved this year to new jersey we left the house in um like upstate new york and she's uh she's working she's doing her uh, her own thing she's okay. having a good time and all of that she's uh, she's about to uh take a vacation actually for a hey, month in Brazil. okay oh okay. So, yeah yeah she's doing a lot better than me <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to go to brazil now Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, let's go. Just transition back to today. So, you know, you start teacher training in 2013. You know, you start doing workshops and everything. Um, what comes after that? You know, you just just continue taking classes and everything. Yes. Yes. So, um, once I started with my training, I um, and then and then I also started going to all of those uh, congresses, um, like all of those events that I was going to, I was taking um, all of the workshops, like the entire day okay. uh, of workshops that they, they had and yeah. doing, a, doing a lot of stuff and practicing a lot and uh, dancing a lot as yeah. well, obviously, yeah. to practice all of that. So, um, yeah, I, I was doing that. And then I was also already getting my, uh, my work as a DJ going at the time okay, okay so um so then i could also you know travel to congresses not just to attend but to also uh play that's awesome and that's then, a great idea too yeah and then that would also provide me the chance to keep taking um classes and yeah. working keep on that's, a, that's a great idea I, i'm curious man when you first started learning to teach um what was it like learning to teach brazilian zoo how was that for you it was um, it was very interesting because I, um, you know, when you start, you learn the dance for yourself. You start like working on um, on the moves, and you start to get your body used to the motion and the mechanics and all of that. But then once you start like expressing what that is and trying to explain and get pass out um, the knowledge, right. It, Forces you to think a lot more yeah. into what you're actually doing, you know. So, um, like, and it was a it was a funny thing for me because I was taking classes and I um, I wasn't um, like natural in it, but I was able to pick things up uh, quickly. Okay. But then, um, as I would pick things up, um, just quick and then start working on it on my like on my own time and all of that my body would get used to it but i still didn't understand exactly everything that my body was doing to get uh -huh. that motion. Yeah, exactly and then yeah, yeah i started noticing all of that once like uh, once i i had to pass on the knowledge so then uh -huh. i had to pay a lot of a lot more attention to myself yeah so i know what exactly is going on Right, 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 right. I'm curious. What, what um, what do you think is the hardest part about teaching? The hardest part about about teaching, um, 
I mean, there are um, like difficult things about teaching um, in the beginning. A lot of stuff that we have to uh, to learn, and like some of it is not necessarily things that we learn in teacher training. Okay. Uh, like for example, uh, in teacher training, like we learn a little bit on how to manage uh, the class. Uh huh. Um, but uh, how to manage the um, like how you're going to teach the class, not so much how you're going to manage the people taking the class. Okay, right, so, right. Yeah, like uh, it was very interesting for me learning um, like some of the things I had to learn by doing it. You know, like things would happen in class, and then I had to figure it out. Oh, like what do I do with this? You know. Because um, like we have we have students uh, sometimes that they come into class and uh, some of them they're like really serious and they like pay a lot of attention. Uh-huh. But some of the students they come in just as a hobby or they just want to you know see w- what it's all about and right. they're not like, paying a lot of attention. So then like we say oh let's do this and like we have to take this step here, but then that information comes in here and then goes. Out okay, this way, they don't pick it and up. And then, yeah, and then, like, I, I was like, oh, they are still not like understanding what's going on, and I had to figure it out, like, how am I going to actually manage to get this information to this person, and right. and like the different um, learning process that each student has as well. Everybody's different. Yeah, yeah, that is um, that, that's crazy, man. And and so I'm curious, you, you already spoke upon it, um. What what gave you the idea to start DJing? Was it just so that you could travel and you know take more classes and everything? Is that how that came about? Uh, no, no. I was uh in a way I was thrown into it. Oh. yeah, because um that started in the very end of t- 2012. So once I started taking classes, we had a guy here in New York that was the DJ for um, the resident DJ here. And then at the end of that year, he knew that I had a good collection of songs because okay. I was like listening to a lot of stuff to, and practicing a lot. So he came up to me like, dude, um, I'm gonna, uh, I have to start waking up really early on Wednesday morning. So I need to leave the social a little earlier than what we're supposed to end. Would you be able to you know from your ipod just play for the last half an hour of the social uh-huh. i'm like okay. yeah sure i'll have my ipod here i just plug it in and that's it right uh-huh. so i started doing that for the socials and then in the beginning of 2013 he came up to me again and then he was like man i'm actually gonna be moving to australia oh wow so I'm gonna need you to take care of the entire social from now oh, on. Oh wow! Okay. And like shit, I don't know how to DJ. I don't know. I don't know this shit. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I'll. I have a lot of songs. I. Uh, I'm already doing half an hour at the end of the social. I'll. I'll figure it out. Yeah. So, um, I had to. Uh, I had to get myself a DJ software. And start doing that from my computer instead of just yeah. from my iPod. So um, in the very beginning, not knowing anything, I just got myself a, a DJ software for um, like uh, to play and do the auto mix. Uh-huh. I wasn't doing anything myself. I was just like, you. auto mix can take care of that. <laughs> I was just working on you know the order of exactly. the songs right, right, right. playlist and. Um, as I was doing that, I just started paying attention to what the software itself was doing as it was like transitioning songs and like changing everything. And like with that, I started learning a little bit of like on uh, about the process of DJing. You know? Yeah. Then um, I was like, well, this is this is cool. I like you know taking care of music and all of that. In um, like with the software and like listening to um, other like actual DJs playing as well, right. I started uh, learning more and more and more and practicing until I was like doing things on my own. Yeah, I say um, I used to 
I used to DJ when I was a child. My parents bought me some turntables, so I, I definitely understand the DJ. What um, what was it like? What was it like? Um, you know, learning to DJ. You bought some turntables, or what would you buy? What would you end up getting? Well, it took me, uh, it took me a, still a little bit of time to buy an actual uh, controller. So in the um, in the beginning, once I started actually playing around with the software, I was just working with the computer. Like okay. I would. Okay mostly give like live the um live the software taking care of things and then every now and then i would come into the um, like in into the middle of the social uh and start doing some transitions myself you know? okay okay and yeah back then it was just that whole you know fade one out right. fade another <laughs> one in yeah and then i started learning about uh bpm Simple. matching is that your bpm and- is very important yeah Yes, and then like how to make smoother transitions from one song to the other. So I started doing that on the computer itself, and then um, I think what when was it? Uh, I was doing that for like 2013, and then 2014, the second semester. I think it was in August or September that I actually bought my first uh, controller. Okay, okay. So then I got that and then I started uh practicing and learning how to manage things and like do actual transitions and all of that. Okay. Yeah. So say so you start you buy control in fourteen and uh and so from that point forward are you just strictly DJing or what? Do you do you have a full time job at this point still or like are you just strictly dancing? My full time job is uh, like teaching and DJing. Okay. And yeah. so, and when did that start though? Back in thirteen, back in fourteen, when it was um, full time with it was in twenty fourteen. Okay, okay, yeah, twenty fourteen, like the um, uh, second half of the year. And and so, I'm, so you know, you have a, a day job in two thousand fourteen, the beginning half, and, and you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna do this full time. What, what was that like? It was, um, it was actually quite. Um, quite simple for me to make that decision because um, I was um, I was taking classes. I was in college, and I was um, I was working at another restaurant. So I thought, well, um, like I um, I need time to work with this, and you know, like for the travel and all of that, and it um, it gets kind of difficult with um like working at the restaurant right. on weekends and then um like taking classes during the week like all of that is taking too much time away from my zook right so i'm just not gonna do it anymore okay so i went full, yeah i went full in uh on the zook side and uh, so i'm curious what was that like those beginning stages when you go from you know having a, a you know a, a job at a restaurant to going full time zoo dancer and instructor, what, what were those beginning stages like? Well, um, so what I was doing back then, and I uh, I started DJing at um, like some events and like some stuff in 2013, like uh, second half of the year, and like with those events and then doing some of the events in 2014 going um like all around i was working on like i was paying uh, pretty much all of it uh on my own like okay. for the travel and all of that i would get like accommodation and things like that like some simple stuff but it was just me getting out there and um uh, like showing my work and yeah getting myself known and all of that so then by 2014, I um, I was like I already um, had made um, like a bit of a name for myself. Okay, I wasn't, okay. I wasn't big, but people knew me. Oh, that's you awesome. Know, they knew that I was working and like I was uh, doing a, a good job. So that's like that allowed me to go full full out on Zook. So I started booking more. Uh, more events and doing more stuff, teaching here and there, doing workshops and DJing at parties, DJing at congresses and all of that. And like, it was, uh, it was a good experience. It was like 
we, in the beginning, we have to spend a lot of money because of course, we need of course. to get out there and like invest a lot. And I did uh, that for um, like for that time. And thankfully, it has been uh, paying out and it has been good for me. Like I started growing um, on my skills and um, like getting um, uh, like a little more known around North America and uh, people like my work and I kept it up, you know. OK, I got you, man. I got you. I- I'm curious, man. Um, So so w- w- tell me. Now tell me what happens between 2014 and 2018. Are you just strictly, you know, DJing and teaching? Anything special happen? Uh, yes. So, um, like between 2014 and 2018, um, like I was going to almost every um, every congress. Okay. Like, and we started having a lot of congress from the uh, from 2013 when we started having that. Like we we've had every year an average of um, like a, I think at least ten events. Oh, wow, uh, that's crazy. In, yeah, in North America, right? So um, I started going to most of those, and like I would uh, teach at some, I would DJ at some, like and quite often, like I was doing both. Of, okay, that's awesome. And and. Um, when like when it was like when was it on 2016 i had my first opportunity to work um like outside north america i ah, went to europe the first time for that's awesome. uh, to work out there and uh get to do stuff more you know like on a broader yeah uh, perspective you know uh so yeah and since uh that year like 2016 i um i've been going to europe um at least once a year okay for for some work out there i'm curious um how big is the brazilian zoo scene in europe is 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 north america does it have the biggest popularity i I guess of um you know of all of the all the countries Mm, like mm, in north america no no oh. um the scene is quite new here oh. um it's um uh, it, we started in like in north america zoo came over here and like around tw- 2007 uh-huh. but um by then zoo was already like going around europe you know? mm. so um like basically the 2000s um, that was the decade of uh, booming, um, of Zook booming in Europe. Oh, wow. And, yes. And then this decade has been the, uh, the Zook boom in North America. Okay. And the next decade, that's going to be Asia. Okay. Okay. So, no. Yeah. And, and so, so tell me, what is the scene like in Europe? What, what is the Brazilian zoo scene in Europe? Is just very popular, widely popular. Um, some places, yes, it, it, they have quite um, like uh, quite sizable scenes out there in some of the places because it's been there since the um, uh, beginning of the two thousands, right? right? Yeah. So some of the uh, some of the areas out there they they have been able to grow a lot, and there's a lot of uh, places almost. Um, well, not almost every country, but like most of the countries in Europe have a scene going. Okay. Uh, whether it's a small scene or it's a it's a big and um, old scene, but there's a lot of places out there, and there's a lot of events going on in Europe as well. That's awesome, man. I want to ask you this. Um, so you've you've been you've seen the growth of of Brazilian zoo. Um, how has Brazilian Zoo changed from when you first noticed it to what it is today? Um, well, the music has changed um, a, a little bit. Like we still like back when I started, um, like we had uh, we still had a, a lot of like traditional traditional kind of music okay. here in North America, but we were getting 
um, already, like at the time, we like um, the music was already changing into the Neo Zook vibe and like a lot of pop music being okay. remixed and, right, right, and all, right. of, all of that, which we have a lot more uh, nowadays. Um, so uh, I've seen the um, uh, the um, like the the music side of it grow into like the traditional like and uh, pop remixes, but very traditional uh, remixes and like some Neo Zook vibes getting into um, like we have some suitable music nowadays. You know, like there's a lot of music that we um, that we get to share with uh, West Coast Swing. Okay. And I, um, like, I remember there was a time where we were getting uh, some dubstep into oh, wow. uh, That's crazy. the scene as well. Like that didn't pan out very much because okay. it's, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> like we had some stuff out there, and um, nowadays we um, like we have been slowing down the music as well compared to uh, when I started. Oh, okay. You know? So, um, we're like, we're, uh, for some time we've had, um, a lot of music that not only we had that energy and that life, um, that Brazilian Zook gives with the traditional, uh, music, but also like some really chill vibes and, okay. uh, like slow music and all of that. Okay. I definitely understand that, man. I want to um I want to ask you about your uh, your little project. Tell me about Zootopia. So Zootopia is a uh, it's a team of DJs that I um, I put together along with uh, my friends here in New York, DJ okay. Power and DJ Vicious. Okay. So um, our idea for it is you know uh, collaborate with each other and work together and um, um uh, and like promote what's the uh, best for Zook. Yeah. You know, when it comes to music and um DJing at parties and, and all of that, you know. So um it's not about um like producing music or anything like that. We don't um we don't produce our own music. At uh-huh. least not yet, maybe hey, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> uh, but um it's more about, you know, like providing um like good music to people and like providing a good ambience and like um for whenever we're DJing at the parties you know and uh, making sure that there's a, a like a standard you know like some pref- professionalism and all of that okay uh, for, as a D- as DJs for everyone yeah. uh, I'm curious uh in, in regards to Zootopia what would you call success for it? How would you define success for Zootopia? Um, I would say it's uh, it would be um, like creating um, um, like a, an ambience, like and a vibe, and creating a, a a party. Like whenever we're DJing, that people would be able to enjoy, and it's gonna give a great time for for everyone you know okay. knowing it's um a lot of it it's knowing how to attend to the dancers right, not just right, right. how to mix and how to like what music to play but how to play um that as well i understand that that's definitely important yeah uh so i, I know you've been dancing for a long time man i i want to ask you what are some lessons that you've learned from dance that you're able to translate to your everyday life? Um, from Zook, I think the biggest lesson that, um, that I would say if I apply it to life is knowing how to listen mm-hmm. to, you know, like knowing how to empathize and like be able to um, understand um uh, people's points of views you know okay because uh the way that i see that in uh, in the dance is that um like once you're a follow you're um like you're dancing 
with your partner and you need to uh, give yourself into uh, into your partner and yeah. like, and and listen to like the information that he's creating and like going along with um, uh, with the dance and um, as a lead we um, like we don't only uh, say things and like create information and we're not just telling our partners oh like we're like we're doing this and we're gonna do that now do this here um, for the leaders we are also listening to our partner because right. for us to be able to create the information, we need to listen to our partner's body and frame. Mm -hmm. Right. So you no, know, um, like we need to know where they are so we know where they can go and how they can go there. We need to listen to how her body is behaving and responding to the information that we have as well. You know, and that is a big life lesson for me to understanding that we need to understand um other people and try to empathize and not just um like give our point of view create uh, like give our information but we need to be able to receive information yeah. as well i definitely understand that man I, i'm curious well what is what is the life like of a traveling dj instructor i know nothing of their world man what is it like it's um it's awesome but yeah. it's um it's very difficult sometimes as well you know because um the the amazing part of it something that i love is being able to travel to so many different places and see so many people get to meet so many people and hang out with a lot of friends from um like whatever you know um i love traveling and um i would love to keep doing that for my whole life you know that's like, awesome yeah, yeah, yeah like staying still in one place drives me crazy but the um, uh the difficult side of it is um like if you are um like always on tour you know if you're just like doing tours and you go uh -huh. out like two months three months at a time it's um like it, it can be difficult because you're like never you don't ever feel like you're at home uh -huh. at least right. for me like some people they uh they can't adapt and they don't mind it at all but um, I also like to have that sense that, oh, I, I'm home. I'm like in my own place. I right. feel very comfortable here. Um, and we don't always get to do that because sometimes when we're on tour, every weekend we're in a different place and we're always moving from one hotel room to someone's couch and okay. just carrying a lot of bags. And like we leave, we live, uh, leave out of a, uh suitcase you know uh, yeah so <laughs> yeah it's um like sometimes it, it's it's tough you know you're like you feel like um you're loving the moment but you're missing your bed and you're missing your home so of course much, of course of course i definitely understand yeah. that man i want to i want to talk to your um to your teacher side real quick all right yeah. uh I'm, for people myself included man i, I feel like i'm a I'm I'm struggling with with learning Brazilian Zouk, man. Um, for people like myself who feel like they're stuck in a beginner's rut, what, what advice could you give us? Uh, beginner's rut. You mean like you don't feel like you are improving? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone goes through that, um, like various times throughout our learning process. You know, okay. so. Um, like what I would say whenever we're getting to a moment like that is, uh, maybe take a step back, you know, not in, uh, dancing, but just, uh, take some classes and like focus a little more in just having some fun, you know, okay. because what I feel worried about whenever we get to moments like that is that, uh, like we have that feeling that we are not uh, progressing and like we're um um like we're getting frustrated that oh like i'm not improving you know 
So uh, one thing that I would say is, um, you know, take a step back, take a, a little break and just uh, dance for fun, you know, try to just have fun with whatever you have, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so you can take your, uh, your, your time to process a little bit of the information that you already had and process what you, uh, what skills you, uh, you already have. So then once you go back into it, maybe your mind is, is at a different place. Okay. You know, and, and you get to see things in a different perspective that I... can like give you more progress, you know? Um, but the other option of that would be maybe try taking lessons of something else, oh. something different, you know, okay. because then it forces your brain to keep, like, it uh, keeps your brain learning, but it forces to think of things in a different perspective in a yeah. different way you know and then you might see something that um you can relate back to what you were doing before sure enough yeah yeah, yeah. i want to ask you this on for for people who are intermediate and they want to take it to the next level you know advanced what does it take for them to you know take that next level get to that next level um uh what takes people from advanced to uh, sorry to from intermediate to advanced is reworking their basics ah. everything because um like normally um like the students that we have in the beginning like the, in the uh, beginner students they don't know everything they're learning all of it still like all of the basics and all of that so they get that information and then usually the intermediate dancers are the ones that already know the fundamentals, but they're not great at it. Oh. You know? But then, um, like they they have they already have something that can take them to different paths, and then they start learning different combinations, different uh, movements, and variations of the fundamentals that we have, right? So then it expands their mind uh, and their skills, mm -hmm. right? But then once you have to go from intermediate to advanced, you, uh, you get to see that uh, you, already have, uh, you already, have, already have a knowledge of the uh, fundamentals and you have a lot of variations and a lot of different things that you can do with it, but you need to clean all of that up. Right. So it's not like being an advanced dancer. It's not so much about um, knowing advanced moves. It's about knowing how to do the moves and the variations and all of the stuff that you learned in um, uh, in intermediate, but like uh, with a greater skill by mm -hmm. working on your basics. You know, like building your fundamentals to um like to expand the um, uh your skills with intermediate stuff okay now i understand that man that makes a lot of sense i asked that question all my guests and all the guests say that um you know the advanced people are working on their basics yeah that's what they all say yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what everyone says man so there's it's gotta be some truth to it uh, mm -hmm. real quick i want to ask you this um what is one tip one piece of advice that you can give to someone to make them a better dancer immediately? Immediately? <laughs> well, uh, I think I would say, um, like, the advice that I would give is don't ever think you know enough. I Like, I just feel like by understanding that we never... Um, like we never end our um, like learning process, you know, um, we're always working on something. We always have something new to work on and like we always have something to improve. So um, a person who understands that, who knows um, there's something that they can, um, there's still room for improvement. Right. To me, that's already a better dancer. Okay. You know? instantly you know and now uh and then with that they can take their time whatever time they uh they need to like find their improvements and find their uh the path that they want to go on 
Okay, now that makes a lot of sense, man. Always be a student. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely understand that. I, I want to ask you, man, um, tell me about some of your upcoming events. I know you're going to be at the Baltimore Salsa Bachata Congress, and I, I think you're also traveling to Brazil in 2020. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah, so, tell me about some of your upcoming events, man. Yeah, the, the stuff that I have coming up now is um, the Baltimore uh, Congress in about like, a couple weeks or so. Um, so I'll be DJing. Uh, we're going to have a full Zook room and um, there will be some instructors stay, uh, like teaching classes over there as well. And then um, the weekend after that, I'll be doing a special event with um, Rio Velandia with my teacher here, nice. um, like special workshop kind of stuff awesome. that we're going to do here in New York. The weekend after that, first weekend of May, LA Zoo Congress. That hey. is a must go event in North America. You know, it's okay, um, okay. Really amazing. You know, so I have that. The weekend after, there's um, um, a smaller event in San Francisco. The weekend after that is Canada Zoo Congress, which is also a must go event in North America. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, um, LA and Canada, they're like um, some of my favorites uh, in the world. You know, aside oh, wow. aside from uh, aside from the ones that I'm like uh, in the organizational uh -huh. team of them, uh, those I just go to to work uh, for them, and like it's definitely um, some of my favorite congresses in the world. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and then um, like a lot of other stuff coming up, but the um, like trip to Brazil in ne uh, next year, that is going to be um, like that's gonna be an epic event. It like yeah. might just be the event of the year because um, it's called Ilha do Zouk, that means um, Zouk Island, and. It's an event that ran from 2009 to 2013, and it's uh, like it was such an amazing event. I I hadn't been there uh, myself, but everyone that I talked to, all of the instructors that used to work uh, there, they used to go, and all of the people that used to attend to the event, they um, they always say amazing things about it, and uh, people. On Facebook, they like there had uh, there had been posts uh, last year, I think, begging to bring that uh, event back. So okay, it's finally okay. happening That's awesome. next year, you know. And um, I'll be DJing there, and I'm like helping out with um, like getting a group um, together from North America to go down there, you know. So oh, that's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I'm like getting a group. Everyone uh, who wants to. Uh, to join us in that trip to Brazil, can contact me and like I already had um, the first group purchase uh, last year. I'm working on the second one um, up until June this year, and then I'm gonna keep on doing that until like we get to the event. Okay, that's really cool. That's gonna be a, an amazing event, man. Oh yes, yes, definitely, man. I want to ask you this, um. I want to say, well, first of all, you know, I want to thank you so much for, you know, taking time out your day to talk to me, man. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I, I really appreciate the, the invitation. And yes, I'd love to do it. Yeah, man. I really enjoyed it. Uh, please let the people know, how can they get in contact with you? How can they reach you? The easiest way to contact me would be Facebook. You know, just um, make sure to uh, send me a message, like, um, you don't even need to friend me. Like I, I check Facebook just like once a day, so I'm not always on like uh, on top of it. But if you send me a message on uh, on Facebook, I will see that as soon as possible and get back to you uh, right away. You know, right, that's perfect. That's perfect, man. I know you also have an Instagram page as well, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah. Maybe hit you on Facebook. Though. I yeah. definitely understand it. Um, the, the Facebook, I'd say, uh, like on Messenger, because that would be just the quickest way to okay to get in touch. Okay, I got you. I understand that, man. Um, like I said, man, I really, 
really do appreciate you taking time and i had a wonderful conversation with you um i should say thank you again man. thank you so much thank you it's been my pleasure hey man enjoy the rest of your day all right sir thank you thank you you too hey, all right man ciao <laughs> ciao <laughs> that's all it is Hey everyone, uh, if you made it this far to all the way to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that, that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So if you find no value in this, and I, I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I, I truly want to, you know, just uh, give value and content to, to the dance community. Um, so please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up, because to be 100% honest with you, um, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So um, to be able to interact with, you know, the dance community, it means the world to me because it, it gives me feedback and it lets me know, you know, what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know, what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could, could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because, you know, that feedback just helps me improve. So, um Please comment uh, as well, you know, please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but, you know, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, you know, I want to I wanna take you on this journey of the Two Love Feet podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So, once again, thank you so much.